Well, welcome to another edition of the Content Press with me, Fifi Manfred on YouTube. So, thank you very much. Uh, our last video is doing very good. We are growing a lot, and I want to say thank you very much for everybody that is supporting me. I'm Fifi Manfred on YouTube, and in fact, my work on Twitter and Facebook um, with my parents. I mean, sharing more to me. I'm very, very grateful to everybody. So yeah, please, like I always do, please do watch to subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share to this video. It's a big update. And I title it, Why Chelsea Needs to Stay Away from One of These Players, Ryan Cherky, Gabri Viega, Mohamed Skourouz, and then, of course, Michael Olisi. So let's get straight into the video now. So um, first of all, do watch to subscribe. Please turn on the notification button so that once the next video drops you can have there's another video very soon on killing the tony mbappe's issue at paris saint germain harry kane has been pictured his wife has been pictured in Bayern, looking for um, schools and hotels for his children so possibly that move is on and ps you want to hijack that move that's going to be the next video so please do subscribe to the channel like share this time it's chelsea let's start it like this so Chelsea at Chelsea, the biggest problem is the midfield depth. And we know that essentially Chelsea wants to get Moises Caicedo. It's the biggest conversation around Chelsea and midfield this season. But right apart from that, there is some need for augmentation in the final third areas, especially for interiors. And I remember in my last video, I spoke about how Mohamed Kudus can be a very good interior for um, Nkuku when both of them are playing the, in the inside number 10. And I made mention of that as well. But just a while ago, they have been breaking news that Chelsea have gone to Crystal Palace to ask about Michael Olise. Michael Olise, the French international. Chelsea have inquired about him and they want to know if it's feasible to do a deal for Michael Olise for around 35 million. The report is that he has a release clause of around 35 million. Chelsea are asking of him. But there's a key detail to Michael Olise, and that is why this video is very important. The comparison between him, Ryan Cherky, Mohamed Kudus, and Gabriel Viega. Who should Chelsea get? Who is going to be the important one? So, by way of contest, in the center forward world, Chelsea has um, Amando Broya, who is injured and recovering from injury. There is also um, Nicolas Jackson, who has been spot on in preseason, scoring and assisting loads of goals yesterday. He was the man of the match in the summer series of the EPL. Um, there is on the right hand side now, there is obviously Noni Madueke, then there is Angelo. Um, Angelo possibly can go on loan. There are a lot of calls from the Chelsea fans who think that he is good enough and he needs to stay in the club. There is Noni Madueke, he was good for the English under 21 in the Euros, who last season also showed glimpses of how good he is. It looks like he has a part into Mauricio Pochettino's team. On the right hand side is Raheem Sterling, there is Mihailo Modric. Modric got a lot of confidence last night after that belt of a goal from Chelsea Football Club and that combination play with Nicola Jackson. In central attacking midfield, there is Nkuku and nobody else. That is where the question comes in. In the middle of the pack, there is Andre Santos, who is going to be, say, a backup to Moises Caicedo when he comes. There is Cesare Casadre, who is going to be a CM backup to Enzo Fernandez in a team, possibly when he stays. There is um, also Conor Gallagher, who can play as a deep line playmaking role and can play as a company to either of these midfield pairs. Now, once Caicedo comes, that midfield is almost set, sort of, to go into the season with. But then the bigger problem is that Chelsea lacks the depth at the right wing area. Like I said, Angelo may go on loan. Now, Chelsea wants to get a right winger who is left-footed because, you know, in a game now, you want right-wingers who can come inverted and cut into their left foot. Who is more inverted? Who has experience in Europe? Who can play the game and can also play as a central attacking midfielder and a partner to Christopher Nkuku? So if Nkuku gets injured, he is going to be the deputy to Nkuku in that area because Chelsea already has Noni Madueke, um, has uh, Raheem Sterling and, and Mihaly Modric in that area. So Chelsea wants a right-winger that can do their job. And the first name, I actually do think that all the names that are coming are just names of players that are on Chelsea's list. The first name that did come was Ryan Cherky. Even before Ryan Cherky, there was Gabriel Viega. So I'm going to walk you through Gabriel Viega. So Viega is a Spanish player. Um, he is in the Spanish under-21s. He's a 21-year-old. Gabriel Viega actually is more of 
a midfielder. He's an attacking midfielder. He's a CM. He can play even in deep areas in terms of if you want to progress the ball. That's who Gabi Vier guys. But his numbers are good in terms of progression of the ball, progressive carries. But in terms of the attacking third, he's not the player that you will go to to be your number one, your number 10, essentially in that regard. Now, again, apart from Gabi Viega, we heard last, we heard in a couple of weeks ago that Chelsea had gone to Lyon um, to ask of Ryan Cheki. Ryan Cheki was in the French under 21. He was being an integral member of Laurent Branks. Um, Leon's team. He was essential in everything creative on the right hand side. And even when he dropped into central areas to link up with attackers and strikers, Ryan Cheki was the man with everything that Laurent Black wanted to do at Leon. You see, the thing with Ryan Cheki is that whilst he's a dribbler, amongst every other player that Chelsea is listing, he's the only nimble footer. He's the only um, ambi pedal player. He's the one that can play the right and left foot together. Mohamed Kudu is an actual left footed player. Michael Oliza is an outside left-footed player that can play us from there. So Ryan Cheki can play both the right foot and the left foot. Whilst he's a wonderful dribbler like Mohamed Kudus, he is also a very good one-touch and goal player. And I'll give you that video here. Out, out of these players, nobody, none of these players, plays in those left and half, half spaces and links up play better than Ryan Cheki. He picks up the ball, quickly one-touch passes, finds runners, and he does it simple. When he has to take on players, which is... Um, um, qualitative superiority, whether 1v1, 2v1. He's a wonderful dribbler. And you know that I've always mentioned that most of these dribblers have very low center of gravity. So Ryan Cheki has that center of gravity. Um, Mohamed Kudus has that low center of gravity. Then, of course, Michael Lulis is a wonderful dribbler who relatively has a low center of gravity in that regard. So very good dribbler, very good player, plays on that side of the, of the game. But the problem with Ryan Cheki is that his numbers, his 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 effectiveness in front of goal is not is, is not close to that of Mohamed Kudus. So Mohamed Kudus last season played about 30 goals. He scored in about 11 of them. He scored 11 goals and he had three assists. Mohamed Kudus' non-penalty goals are better than Ryan Cheki. Mohamed Kudus' um, assists is better than Ryan Cheki. Mohamed Kudus' goals is better than Ryan Cheki. Mohamed Kudus' attacking involvement generally is better than Ryan Cheki. What Ryan Cheki actually is better than Mohamed Kudus in is his combination play. He has none um, his off the ball actions and runs to create chances and space for teams. These are the numbers that he is better in, which is compared to Mohamed Kudus. But when it comes to the effectiveness, Kudus is better than him. Cheki is also a better player in terms of the fact that he can play on the on with his right foot and his left foot. He's also a very good touch and go combination, or like they call it a war pass here in Ghana kind of player. He's a better player than Mohamed Kudus in that regard. Then comes in Michael Olise. So Olise is also in the French and the 21 side. Um, there are a lot of French boys in the Chelsea locker room now. If Olise or, che or Cherokee gets in there, they can play very well. But let me add, okay, I'll come back to this. Um, they can play very well because they can link up with the French boys in there. Um, Olise too is around 21 years. He's essentially a central attacking midfielder, left-footed, also can play out on the right. Like I've told you that um, Pochettino wants to mimic the semblance of what he used Dele Ali for. Comes inverted, sort of the Bernardo Silva role for Chelsea from the right wing. Comes in very good dribbler, cuts onto the left foot, finds pieces, plays people through, and can also shoot and score from there like Mohamed Kudus. And he is the best at that. Olise also gives him that goal. In fact, if you want a proper threat in terms of hold up play in front with his physique and what have you, is Olise. The problem with Olise is that I don't know why people are just. Um, linking Olise with Chelsea quickly like that because he just got injured in the French under 21. He got, I think, a muscle injury or so, and he has been ruled out for about three months. So, um, yes, he has a buyout clause of about 35 million. Yes, he's a good player, but his injury recently hasn't been good. In fact, out of them, Mohamed Cruz also has problems with injury. Yes, he's a good player. Last season, he wasn't really injured, so it gives him a very good slate in terms of injury. But um, Olise just got injured recently. For Cherokee, he has a very good run. The problem, however, with Cherokee is that Cherokee is with Kaelin Luton in Mbappe's um, management team, Mbappe's mother's management team. So Faisal Amari is always going to play hardball for it to get Cherokee. So again, I think that while these players are very good, it will come down to a lot of factors. First of all, it will come down to price. And I think that's why Chelsea are putting all these names out there. Chelsea wants to know which of these teams will give them a very good price. So Olise from Crystal Palace, I hear has about 35 million release clause. Cherokee, it was around 30 million when Leon needed more money. Now Leon said he don't need money again. Mind you, Leon has an American owner. 
Chelsea can do deal with them possibly because they are also American owners. It can be good. It cannot. Now the price has gone up for Turkey about 40, 45 million. Mohamed Kudus is no is not going to go down than 50 million for my ass Amsterdam. Um Gabi Viega within that region. But for me, essentially, it's in these three players, Turkey, um, Olise, and then of course Mohamed Kudus. And the problem is I think Chelsea should stay away from Olise. Yes, he has a Premier League experience, but that injury can be niggling. It can be um, recurring in the next one um, to about eight months in the English Premier League. And you don't want that, especially when these guys are young and they can play a couple of games more. So now it comes down for me between Cherky and then Mohamed Kudus. That is the bigger problem. Cherky is left-footed, right-footed. Cherky is a better dribbler. Cherky is not a better dribbler. He's the same quality dribbler like Mohamed Kudus, but he's a better Take and go player, the one touch passes quickly. He's exceptional at it than Kudus. But Kudus gives you much more effectiveness in front of goal. He scores most of the goals, he creates most of that assist, and he is that good in that regard. Both of them had very good injury records, especially in the last season. And both of them have seen it. For Kudus, he had that experience in the Champions League as well. Played for the Ghana national senior team. Of course, you can't compare the Ghana national team to the French um, label. But he has played for the Ghana national team, played in the World Cup. He has that experience. So like I said, it will come down to a couple of things. As a Chelsea fan, I'm torn. As a Ghanaian, I'm really torn. But um, between Cherky and Mohamed Kudus, who will you choose? Let me hear from you in the description below. Um, this was a quick one for the Chelsea people on Cherky, Olise, Mohamed Kudus. I'm grateful for your time. My name again is Fifi Manfred. It's Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Do watch, subscribe, like, and share. The show is actually called The Counter Press, but the handle is Fifi Manfred on YouTube. I'm grateful for your time. Share. I love you. I'll see you.